I want to uh, quickly take you through a, a couple of examples and then uh, move on to maybe some news you can use uh, tips if I can find what I'm looking for. Um, I, I've sort of become the go-to guy for FOI issues uh, at my paper, um, which I'm perfectly happy with because uh, I believe strongly in FOI and the public's right and the like, and if I can get this to start um, there. To get us in the mood, I'll go with a, a great quote from a federal court case. Um, I, I don't know uh, sort of what got me on this kind of FOI kick, but you know, I'm normally a reasonably even-keeled guy. One second. Um, but nothing gets my blood boiling uh, like a public official, you know, saying you can't have it or we don't want to answer. And, and uh, really, I mean, I can, I have almost been arrested once with a judge. And otherwise, I'm like a perfectly happy guy. Um, I, I think what may have cemented it about <coughs> 10 years ago, a colleague and I were working on a series of stories about conflicts of interest in academic medical research. One of the things we wanted to look at was FDA advisory panels where, uh, you know, big names in academia help the FDA decide if a uh, drug is safe, is it effective, um, and FDA rules forbid them from passing judgment on drugs if they have a financial interest, but they can waive that rule and almost always do, and we wanted to see those waivers and kind of, well, you know, how serious on some of these drugs were the, uh, uh, the conflicts of interest. And this is the top half of the page uh, relating one about a Dr. Brandt who has advised the FDA that he, and I think all that's blacked out is the name of his spouse, uh, have financial interests which could be affected by his participation. And then the rest of the letter explained what those conflicts were. And this is what the rest of the page looked like. So we learned that Dr. Brandt, and then it's blacked out, and then in addition Dr. Brandt, further Dr. Brandt, Dr. Brandt, and finally Dr. Brandt, and that's all they would tell us. Um, and, and uh, you know, so the blood pressure's up here. Um, and I'll tell you, we ran that exactly like that in the paper. And, and I, I think the headline was Disclosure FDA Style. <laughs> and it felt really good to kind of, you know, give them a little kick there. But the fact is, I never found out what was behind those black bars. And I think I would have done it differently today. I think I would have been more inclined uh, to fight. So I want to talk about some cases where um, I have fought also uh, with the United States military um, for uh, similar investigative reports. Uh, in 2006, uh, a colleague of mine, Lisa Chetical, who's now at Boston University, and I did a series of stories on, uh, that reported that the military was uh, ascending and keeping mentally ill troops uh, in the battlefield, often with, uh, with tragic consequences. Um, and we had, I can't remember what's next. Oh, no. There we go. Um, we wanted to approach this uh, both kind of anecdotally and statistically. You know, we were looking for stories, but we also wanted sort of broad information that might show, you know, are these exceptions to the rule if we find a tragic case, if we find a suicide, you know, in the war zone, uh, or is there something systemic wrong? So I want to talk about quickly each of those. The first on the systemic side, uh, we found that Congress had ordered the military to assess the mental health of all deploying troops. This was after the first Gulf War. They ordered the military to, the military said, oh, okay, we will. And there's a form that is filled out by all deploying troops. And we found out that this form is recorded in a big database somewhere. And we found out that the database at least is kind of supposed to be made available to civilian researchers. And, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I consider myself a civilian researcher. Uh, so I requested access. There's actually, they, you know, take out all the identifying information, and this is available online uh, if you can get access to it. So I signed up for it, and I was turned down. This was in early July of 05. I was turned down on July 7th, and then turned down again on July 20th, and July 26th, and July 27th. Uh, and then finally, uh, with this, I'd found, although he didn't give his name, DMED administrator. Um, just said, thanks for your interest. It's limited to military investigators or non-military investigators with a direct affiliation with the military. And I didn't think that was true. 